Hello crafty friends, it's Call Me Crafty Owl back on the Scrapping for Less YouTube channel with some more inspiration using the latest Flavor of the Month card kit. I hope you'll stick around, see which collection I'm going to use, and see the cards that I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the Scrapping for Less channel, I hope that by the end of this video you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. The latest Scrapping for Less Flavor of the Month card kit debuted just a little over a week ago and it's already super popular. September 2020's theme is Orchards and Patches, and it is chock full of fall and autumn goodies. If you haven't already watched the other videos here on the channel featuring the kit, I hope you'll check those out when you're done here. For today, I'm going to be using collection number four, which is called Pumpkin Patches and Harvest Wishes. I pre-selected three of the pattern papers, and I will be using the stamp from the kit as well. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. Make sure if I leave you with any questions to leave those in the comment section below, and I will stop back by to answer those. Let's get crafty. To get started today, I'm gonna to be doing the stamping and coloring. To stamp my images on, I cut two scraps of an off-white cardstock, and you'll see later that it is the same color as my card base, and I will be stamping this in Memento Rich Cocoa. Now, my ink pad is a little dry, so you'll see that I gave that stamp some extra coverage, and I also huffed or kind of blew on that stamp before I brought it to the paper. I stamped two of those, and then it was time to do some coloring. Today I will be using colored pencils and once again I am using my empty alcohol ink blending pen that I have put a little gamsol in or odorless mineral spirits to blend that coloring out. Now the first thing I did on the image was kind of get out a turquoise or a teal that matched the trucks that you'll see on the pattern paper and I went in with a real heavy hand on the hay there and that's because I won't be blending that out later because it's a little too skinny for that. Once I had the hay there filled in, I came in with a lighter hand and colored in each of the letters in pumpkin. Now before moving on to any shading on this, I did bring in that Gamsol marker and I blended out that blue color. Now I overfilled my marker so it gets my paper a little extra wet. So once I had that first layer down and blended, I did bring in my heat tool and just quickly dried that a little bit so I could come in with my second layer of blue. For this one, I put some darker color on the top and bottom of each of the letters. And then again, I brought in that marker and faded that out. So there's kind of a highlight across the center of pumpkin. You'll see that each time I get kind of too much color on my marker because I do want to highlight, I just bring it to the outside of my cardstock and wipe that off till the color goes away. Now if I was not going to fussy cut this, I would want to wipe that marker off on a separate piece of paper. Once I had all of the blue colored in, I got out my orange colored pencil and used the same process for the pumpkin itself. I did end up coloring and fussy cutting two of the pumpkin images and here in just a little bit I'm going to show you the second image as well. It will be the one on the right on the picture. And for this one, instead of going in with a light hand at first for the background of the pumpkin, I went in with kind of a medium pressure. So you'll notice it's just a little bit more darker than the one on the left. I was just having fun playing around to see what these colored pencils do. For the layout of the cards today, I will be using the July 2020 sheet load of cards and I'll just be using the individual dimensions to make two cards. Now this is kind of a fun fold card. Once I have my card base made, I cut a one inch strip off the left of the front. When the card is folded, you'll be able to see the inside. 
Now I'm going to cut my pattern papers. Now the sketch itself calls for having kind of mix and match where one card would have the blue pattern paper on the front and one card would have the trucks. But I decided that both of my cards would have the truck pattern paper on the front of the card and it would have the blue chevron peeking out from the inside. Something else I changed from the sheet load was instead of using cardstock to mat the pattern paper pieces, I chose two of the browns that came in the kit and I will mat one card with each of these. So I just cut those down so the pieces were slightly larger than what I just cut. If you're interested in downloading the July 2020 sheet load of cards, I will have a link to the debut video in the description box below. Now that all of the paper pieces were cut, I could start putting the cards together. The first thing I did was mat each of the pattern paper pieces with the coordinating brown paper mat. Once I had all of that done, I then started getting these placed on the cards. The larger pieces got adhered to the front, leaving an even border on all edges. And then the smaller strip got adhered to the inside, and then I made sure the top, right, and bottom margins were the same as on the front of the card. For my focal points, I did a little die cutting off camera. Using this Scribbles die, I cut two of those from that same off-white cardstock, and then I took some scraps of the brown pattern paper and cut two double-ended fishtail pieces. To get started on my embellishment cluster, I adhered each of my pumpkins centered on the double-ended fishtails. Once I had those in place, I decided where that would go on the Scribbles die cut, and I adhered those two pieces together. Now I just put a little adhesive on the back of the pumpkin piece and then adhered the die cut to it. There is still a little extra adhesive on the back of there, but you'll see here in just a minute that I'm going to be using some foam adhesive to pop these up off the card. So that extra adhesive that's sticking out from behind the die cut circles will not affect the card in any way since it won't really touch it. Once I had the foam adhesive in place and had it cut correctly so it would not keep the card from opening, I pulled the release paper on that and decided where I wanted it to go on the front of the card. This is a place where you can adjust this to fit your needs. And here is a look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's quick and easy cards. If you did, as always, we appreciate a thumbs up. Until the next video, we hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.